Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't so I, don't I want to be able to. I want to be able to like kill both. Well, actually, three birds with one stone: hacks, demos, and storybook, just by messing with hacks props. Let's make well, it for if if you want to if you want to mess with that, then you are more than welcome. But it is it is in the store. So there's a node to there it is. Node to hacks element is thrown around. Um, at least as far as passing it back and forth. Now, fortunately, with the most recent refactor, there's not a ton of this going on, obviously, even just searching node to hacks element, because um, we go both directions, right? So there's node to hacks element, um, which is take some node in the DOM and basically siphon off that information I just said. This was such a pain in the butt to do, like to figure out that this was how to accomplish this piece right here. But um, if you get the attribute of style, like, you, I think there's other pieces that dig into it to make sure that it's just as a string. Like I was trying to get it as an object, like you were saying, and it's, it's almost easier to get it as a string and then explode the string into the data object just because of the way that. Cause you're reading in existing elements. Yes. And I'm dealing with a finite set of self-defined knobs. Yes. No, that, no, I get it. Like that makes sense, but actually so, the, Node to hacks element has me really excited now because I think that might that might also be interesting for me. Um, and then I think there's hacks element to node maybe. Yeah, the hacks Content. element to node. Um, I just forget when I name these ones because some of these I named forever ago. It's like two content. Now is that in hacks itself? This stuff is in hacks body is where a lot of these function, the ha hacks underscore body repo has all of the guts of how hacks actually operates. And then the HAX tag is like the general integration. Um, hacks to content, da, 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 node to content. Uh, I'm sure it's in the store somewhere. There's, we have a bunch of, yeah, like this, take, take a node convert it to static content and build it, rebuild it again. This is how we help maintain uh, data security so that you're not injecting stuff is that whenever there's operations involving the content of the page where I'm always converting it into a data object and then running a function to make the data object convert it back into, um, into what it is. But there's some helpers in here you can definitely look through. And I, I'm not opposed to redoing that. It just, I, I don't actually know off the top of my head what the implication of that that piece being rewritten is um, okay. no i can i can work around that i just thought i'd ask the question oh questions gosh i know um there's question. also some awesome comments in here i'll tell you ahead of time if you look in guest gizmo um the fact that that even works is it's, this is some of the most complex logic i've ever written probably so yeah and i said oh my god we just found a property um because I love it's... that your co your comments tell a story. <laughs> it's like stream of consciousness. I can't time. believe I got that work. I mean, it, the thing that, <laughs> that that lets you search NASA and then it knows dynamically what it convert NASA can convert NASA into is just rather ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but here we go. So like, there's hacks element prototype, right? This ends up generating a very similar structure, although this will pass along Gizmo, which is you know our code name for for the, that piece of the data blob. Mm -hmm. um, the grid plate thing is what I was looking at. Do I need to like drum roll? Wrapping up on time here almost, but um, internal okay. to hash. So this is what I was bringing up to um, Nara's developer. Uh, and this is, Nikki was asking about if we can make something that's abstracted to be a grid plate. So we have a grid hyphen plate tag and then hacks treats it like a first class element, even though it's not part of hacks. Um, and it's because we needed something to do grids. And so the major difference between like what grid allows and other things is it passes certain tests that say, hey, this is a grid. And so because things say it's a grid, it's handled slightly differently when it comes to um, like content being pasted, it's handled slightly differently in um, the body as far as dictating, um, technically hacks is maintaining in state what is active and then what is the active parent tag. And I've 
gone back and forth about dropping the connotation of parent tag because you can always calculate what that is very easily, right? You just go up to the parent, but you could easily get into rather sophisticated scenarios with um, like the timeline tag, right? Where the, the timeline or a gallery has a series of complex content within it and that the parent of that complex content isn't necessarily um, the DOM nodes that are above it. It might be, well, you wanna move the timeline around. So the timeline is the parent, but this slotted content way down here um, that shows you a card, that, that card, even if it's active and you can modify it, should be reporting that the parent is you know, the, the timeline, for example. Yeah. So there is, there are some, uh, some very hard coded types of statements occasionally in hacks that are around, like, you know, if this is a grid plate, right? So in how hard would it be to, to kind of, to hacks property, if I, <laughs> if I can use that, uh, something into, you know, being some kind of a grid plate type? Um, yeah, I don't think that would be terribly crazy. Um, you're saying that we would have something in hacks body behaviors. Yeah. So in the kind of like how I just added the demo schema really, cause that was, yeah. Like, seconds. like when we add the hacks properties that there might be a property that says, um, I don't know what we, do we want to call it like a grid plate type or. So it, it could be like, you know, type grid plate and we could have some like dedicated, you know, cause and right now could, there's, there's grid plates and there's things that aren't grid plates. We could assume everything that doesn't define type is a, not a grid plate as an easy API extension. Or, well, and then, and then what types of tags can, you know, what types of children it can accept? Yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, if you want to, uh, explore adding that, uh, cause especially cause you're working on other tags that would will increasingly get into this well, phenomenon. Well, yeah, because right now, like you're just adding those things as properties within the code editor. But when I saw that, uh, the email that you and I got, I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that is something that I want to do, especially when I get back to rich text editor and table editor, I want to be able to, you know, have these containers, but also limit what can go inside of them. So, so here's, here, uh, this, maybe this helps then. This is how I added support for demo schema. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some validation functions in, in hacks and for various purposes. So it could integrate with vanilla and external systems. It is a horrific mess of the way that it works, but ultimately everything comes to this set, uh, this dot set hacks properties. And so it takes in the properties, the tag, some context of what's dictating this, um, and then whether or not hacks is ready. And then it does, um, it more or less does API validation that you are correctly using hack schema so that you can't just put whatever you want in there and then, you know, or you, you write it as broken JSON and it somehow doesn't work. Um, so this will do things like, hey, if, if we're using API one, right, so that then in the future we could have API two or whatever if we end up, you know, drastically modifying this, but we haven't yet. Um, then it gets into each of the like, hey, this does it have can properties? And this is, I think, the important part from data validation standpoint. If we're adding anything to this, we need to support backwards compatible, like that we didn't mm -hmm. have it. So in this case, you know, if you didn't define can can uh, position, which is whether or not it can have the float left or right, is effectively mm -hmm. what that is. But if you didn't define it, then just say that you can. If you didn't have scale, just say that you can. If you didn't say whether or not you can edit source. So it does a little bit of like API repairing almost as far as the schema. Um, uh, if you don't have a gizmo, then I say false. And gizmo is that whole thing that basically makes it show up in the UI as something you can drag and drop on. Um, then there's setting, you know, the rest of the settings, right? But then for demo schema, I added, hey, well, if you don't have demo schema, then add it as just an array, right? So it's just an empty array, so it validates. Um, and then I have a uh, prototype hacks properties call, and this can be used by other things to basically fill in the gaps. So imagine that this is like a generic, like a generic working hacks schema mm -hmm. object with everything filled out. Um, it would also make it easier if someone wanted to, you know, call that up and piece through it and see what it is if they start digging in the weeds. But um, I don't think it would be terribly difficult to add that. Um, it would just be more a question of, 
you know, well, are we adding just grid plates? Are we adding types of, of tags? Are we saying this is a type of tag that is a grid plate? Is, this is that a... what we originally envisioned of uh, the blocks versus stacks? Like a block was a thing that you filled in and a stack was more like a template with, so yes. a block was a container? Yeah, in, in the way that stacks and blocks have worked out as far as the API, um, that is or, effectively what it still is. It's just that they get loaded in in a slightly different way and the stacks mm -hmm. are, um, I can, it's in the demo here. Um, what are we using store, that blocks namespace for then? In the app store blocks more or less dump in predefined like grid column things. Mm. I mean, we could gut that because now it's irrelevant because of how we read it. You're not it. using it now, right now? I mean, it, it is still, it still shows up in the UI if it's available, but, it's, but it's, it's not nearly as important now that we have the grid plate stuff in a really good space. Yeah, we could, because so. if we can revisit that, like maybe that's what it is, is that we call it a block. Mm -hmm. And then it's sort of, you know, here's what it accepts and, you know, here, maybe it whitelists or maybe it blacklists things, but here's, here's what this tag can take within its containers. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll open up an issue to have a, a placeholder for conversation in the future as a reminder Yeah, I'm not ready to look at it yet. Because we do need yet, to hash that out more. But it's definitely, you know, as soon as I pivot away from studio or studio may make me pivot to it, um, that was next on my big roadmap of Nikki things to do. I, fortunately, because GitHub is just so wonderful, I've already assigned you to fill out the issue in the time it took there. And now we've accomplished something. And we're at five o'clock, so we're Yeah, up. hey. So, yay, we made it to the end of another week. Welcome to the end of week eight. Um, I'm sure we'll be back next week for week nine, as we are still all in web components quarantine. Um, if you want to get more involved in our projects, make sure you hit up hacksthaweb.org or elmsln.org. It has a lot of details on both of them about different things we work on. Um, we also have a Slack channel that you can find links as to how to get involved from there. Um, otherwise, if you go to bit.ly uh, slash hacks slack, H-A-X slack, then it'll give you an invite link shortcut and you can come in and chat with us and jump on uncode as well. So uh, have a good week, everybody.